the Fine Cut um, 9 program, go to Mamaki uh, Global uh, website and then go to Downloads and then Software and you'll see um, the software come up down here. Of course you'll want to go to for Illustrator or for Corel Draw. You can load in uh, Fine Cut to either one of those programs. And here are the software that you can uh, download for your uh, machine, whether it be a Macintosh or um, for Windows. It's also uh, very good to look over here on the right hand side to see which one is the most updated and download that for your machine. Alright, so then you go here and you come all the way down to the bottom and then you click here to download. So after all of that is loaded and you um, open up Illustrator, if you hit Window and you go down, you will see your Mamaki Fine Cut uh, Tool Palette here. And when you click it, of course, it will come up here. So let's talk about the tools that um, are in Fine Cut. So remember, um, to enter your serial number after you have um, downloaded it and your serial key um, will be entered here. If not, it's only valid for 30 days and then it will turn off. Alright, then um, we'll talk about a few things that you can do to connect to your plotter. You need to go to this button here find the model that you have um, and then make sure just to leave this as the default and then to find your communication most of the time it will be through USB or your local area network and just click USB and it will find it and then you can run a connection test when you're running a connection test be sure to make sure that your plotter is on and in the remote setting Alright, so now we'll go to uh, this one here, which is going to be um, creating a registration mark. So maybe we want to create registration marks after we print these black squares. So we'll create a rectangle around the area, making sure it's not too close to the artwork and then you select this button here and it will uh, allow you to create the registration marks to do print and cut. So uh, then you pick which type of mark that you want. Make sure that the type of mark that you're putting on your artwork is the same mark that your machine is set in its settings to read. This is mark type 1 and this is mark type 2. It will give you a recommended size. This is usually the size that um, I use. Of course, you can increase the width, the line width size of this if it's um, a colored media or something that is metalized or reflective. You might want to increase this line width here as well as fill around the registration marks. I also like to um, put a print direction arrow mark on there so that I know uh, when and how to load it back into the media, maybe if I'm laminating it. Then I also like to leave a rectangle as a cutting line so when I weed it out I have a nice um, place to start at. And then you just push OK. And you see it filled in around the registration mark as red. If you want to do that. And then here is the uh, print direction arrow. If you notice in your layers palette, the registration marks are on their own layer and it made a layer for this frame cut that we have here. And as you see, it set it to um, not print. So that's how you create registration marks for 
the machine to read. Then the next one that we're going to um, talk about is your offset tool. This is also an easy way to be able to create cut lines. So maybe we want to create cut lines for these squares. We can do that very easily with the tools that come with Find Cut. You just uh, select this button and then this offsets the frame. If you want it exactly onto the color, you leave zero and push OK. And as you see, it also created a layer um, just for those cuts, right? So if I turn off all of my other layers, the layer that it created are these here. Again, setting that layer not to print. I'll turn back on my layers. All right. Also, if you would like to, instead of making it um, exactly onto where that black line on the outside of those blacks, maybe we want to create a little bit of bleed. You can bring those in by going minus. So it brought it inside or maybe you want it to go on the outside and have a white border on it. Then you do it in the positive manner. See how it put it on the outside. Again, see how it made a, uh, a rounded corner on this? That will depend on how you joins here. Do you want it joins as miter? When you do miter, of course it will keep those edges sharp. So you have a few options there but that's what the exact frame does. There's some other Pathfinder tools um, on the Mica Cut, uh, Fine Cut as well. This one will allow you to set up trapping if you want to. Sometimes trapping is good if you're doing lettering out of ready to apply vinyl. What it does is it joins those together. So what this tool right here does is it divides objects. You can select both objects, hit this button here, and you see how now it has divided it into two and taken the corner of that rectangle out. This one here, this allows you to add weed marks if you would like. So say we're going to cut that out. See how it will create a frame around it? It will divide it up into different things and it will select and do um, weed marks for you here. See, you can decide and move it where you want it. This is really cool to be able to use if you're doing really intricate vinyl cutting and having to weed it out. And then you just push OK see how it made those cut lines for you. This button here is some text effects if you would like, but you have to select some text. I don't use this very often, but I know some people who do. This will allow you to do some text effects if you would like, but um, fairly easily. All right. Here's where you can import a plot file, an SVG file if you want to from uh, cutting lines or from a different program. This will help you uh, if you have a rasterized object. So let's take this and rasterize it real quick. Now it's a rasterized image. This is kind of like a trace tool. It is not as good as Illustrator's trace tool but it will trace it out and help you find um, cut lines for your raster images. All right, so once you have everything ready and you want to send it to the plotter, you'll want to select what it is that you want to send. When you have it selected, what you want to send, the information you want to send over to the plotter, 
these two buttons is what sends the information over once you have your registration marks selected as well as your cut lines then make sure to use these two buttons to send over the information for the um, plotter so when you select this first button it tries to select every line that is in your artwork so you'll want to make sure and what I've selected I want to send over to the plotter then this comes up this is actually very important making sure that if you have something that has registration marks on it you click the register mark because you want it to tell them that you have registration marks in your artwork and I want you to just look for this area within the registration marks see so you see here that you can have different layers of cut lines right so in your layers we have the registration mark layer and our frame cut layer you can select on and off to see which um, you've got selected and if you have three or four different cut lines in here you can decide which um, cut lines to send over first if you want to you can even uh, select here and specify each tool for each layer meaning you can have the drop down options of the cut settings that you've set up on your plotter for your presets so you can have CT3 maybe we did a perforation cut for um, the cut 2 and we want that so you can set up the different um, presets here again this um, section here says okay I have a registration mark and I want the first time you go to read the job I want you to check all four registration marks and then maybe for each um, print after that if it repeats once or twice going um, left or right or if you have a few copies going um, in the feed direction you can add and repeat section here all right so here's your layout and then once that um, you get this set up and you know which um, cut lines are ready to send over then you just push plot and then it sends the information over to your plotter Again, being sure that your plotter is in the remote um, option.